In talking about vaccine efficacy, I referred to the characteristics of the immune response influencing the efficacy or the protective qualities of the vaccine. Now, what did I mean by this? And so it's time now to look on a very basic level at the human, human immune system and how it responds in respect of vaccines. The human immune system is designed to deal with viruses in essentially two ways, for two reasons. One is that the virus lives outside cells and in this way gets transported around the body, for example, such as the blood or in the extracellular fluid. One arm of the immune system is designed to deal with the virus outside cells. On the other hand, the virus gets into certain cells and replicates or reproduces itself within the cell, and the immune system needs another arm, another defense mechanism, to deal with virus inside cells. And so the immune system is essentially divided into two. There are cells of what we call the B cell lineage, which are responsible for antibody production. And the antibodies are capable of neutralizing, binding to and neutralizing the virus in, for example, the blood. And when we get to the intracellular virus, we need what are called cytotoxic T lymphocytes, killer cells, cells that are able to recognize virally infected cells, seek them out and destroy them. And in this way, the immune system is able to deal with the virus both inside cells and outside of cells. So there are two arms, essentially, to the human immune system in respect of measles virus vaccine. The B cell response and the cytotoxic T cell response. Now, these responses and their respective contribution to vaccine immunity is governed by what are called T lymphocytes. And again, there are two subsets of these T lymphocytes which help regulate the immune response. These are called T helper cell type 1 or Th1 responses that stimulate cytotoxic T lymphocytes and T helper cell type 2 responses, which stimulate the antibody arm of the immune system. So two helpers, two arms of the immune system, and these are referred to respectively as cellular immunity, that is how the immune system deals with intracellular virus, and humoral or antibody immunity, how the virus is dealt with by the, in the extracellular space of the human body by antibodies. Now, as in everything in life, balance is crucial. It's crucial in vaccine responses just as it is in infection. And a balance in this response between both arms of the immune system is essential to recovery from acute infection and the development of lifelong immunity. So, recovery, interestingly with measles, is possible even when the antibody response is somewhat deficient. But what has become clear with measles is that an adequate cytotoxic T cell or cellular immune response is essential. And without that, people who are deficient in that, in that aspect of their immune system are at high risk of severe measles and death. So it is, appears to be that the cytotoxic T cell response, the cellular immune response, is particularly important in respect of measles virus. Now, problems come when there is imbalance, particularly when there is imbalance away from an adequate cytotoxic T cell response with measles virus, and a balance, a, a, a bias towards an excessive B cell response. And it's the B cell response, this Th2 type response, that we see in, for example, allergies in allergic disease like asthma or eczema, uh, hay fever, and other conditions. So imbalance leads to problems. And T helper cell balance is influenced in turn by host-related factors, that is age, the genetic makeup of the host, the health and their nutritional status, virus and vaccine-related factors such as the dose, the strain, the route by which they're administered, and the combinations in which the vaccine is given 
with other things, uh, for example, uh, mercury or aluminum in other vaccines, and then, um, for example, other vaccines that themselves produce a bias in this immune system. So given in advance of or at the same time as a measles containing vaccine may pervert or corrupt or change the immune response to measles virus accordingly. So here we have in summary two arms of the immune system, the antibody immune system which deals with extracellular virus, the cytotoxic T cell immune response dealing with intracellular virus controlled by T lymphocytes, Th1 on the cytotoxic or cellular immune side, Th2 on the B cell or antibody side. The problem for vaccines is that the efficacy of the vaccine is measured almost exclusively by antibodies, by measuring the presence and level of neutralizing antibodies in the blood of vaccine recipients. It is very much more cumbersome and more difficult to measure efficacy in terms of the cytotoxic T cell response. And because of this bias, there has been a tendency over time to give agents with vaccines that boost the antibody response. And at the same time as doing that and producing an apparent increase in the efficacy of the vaccine, the amount of antibody that the vaccine generates, what this does in fact is to pervert the immune response to shift it away, in the case of measles, from an adequate cytotoxic T cell response towards this pro-allergic type response. So the schedule of vaccines creates further problems because, because vaccines are, their efficacy is measured in terms of antibody responses and we're therefore continually trying to drive them in favour of a greater and greater antibody response, then we are pushing the immune system further and further away from what would be considered to be an adequate immune response for a virus like measles. The other problem, as I mentioned earlier, is that some of the excipients, for example, uh, components of the vaccines such as aluminum and mercury themselves specifically bias the immune reaction towards a B-cell response and away from an adequate cytotoxic T-cell response, further therefore impairing the ability of the immune system to deal adequately with measles virus. And what this creates, certainly from our knowledge of other viruses like uh, retroviruses or hepatitis B, uh, C virus, is that if there is an inadequate cytotoxic T-cell response, if we produce a response to the virus that does not induce adequate cellular immunity, that puts a selection pressure upon the virus to mutate. And those mutations may ultimately become what are called escape mutants. In other words, they're mutants of the virus that can elude the immune response induced by the vaccine. And therein lies a potential problem. So balance is absolutely essential. And in terms of illustrating the importance of this balance, I want to talk about a subject which is gaining um, acceptance at the moment based upon experience with the influenza vaccine. Let us look at influenza itself. Again, we look at both the B and the T cell responses, the humoral and the cellular immune responses in respect of the flu virus. In season one, when we're exposed to a flu virus, let's call it the H1N1, H referring to the hemagglutinin, N to the neuraminidase proteins that are on the surface of this virus, H1N1. Then in season one, we may develop an effective antibody response against this virus and indeed an effective uh, T cell response. What is emerging is that sometimes we don't produce a terribly effective B cell response, but the exposure to the influenza virus leads to a broader repertoire of T cell responses so that we're able to respond not just specifically to the H1N1, but for example, to a virus that we see in subsequent flu seasons, call it H2, uh, H2N7. Now, the antibodies that are produced 
to the H1N1 are specific. And so when we encounter in the next flu season H2N7, those antibodies are not effective at dealing with the virus. Nonetheless, the T cell response is broader and appears to help us deal with subsequent flu seasons, even though we're dealing with a different influenza virus. Now, when it comes to influenza vaccine, the situation is somewhat different. In season one, we may have a vaccine which protects against the specific strain of the virus that is prevalent at that time to a greater or lesser extent. But what the vaccine appears to do is to inhibit the development of this broad repertoire of T cell or cellular immune responses. And so what happens in the next season is that when we encounter influenza of a different strain, the previous vaccine is no longer effective. The antibodies produced by that previous vaccine do not induce adequate antibody immunity. But at the same time, we have inhibited the T cell or cellular immune response to the flu virus. And that makes us more susceptible to the virus in subsequent flu seasons. So the Canadians, amongst others, have found in several very, very interesting studies that if you have been previously vaccinated against influenza, then in subsequent flu seasons, you are more liable to get influenza, more severe influenza, and a greater number of, for example, hospital admissions. And this is an example of imbalance that is induced by a vaccine compared with the balance that is induced by the natural immune response to the infection. And so as an exercise, what I want you to do is familiarize yourselves with the nomenclature of lymphocytes, B cells, T cells, cytotoxic T cells, the uh, T helper cell type 1, the T helper cell type 2 response, and how those responses are mediated by chemical messengers called cytokines.